Hello everyone, so today we're going to be covering the 2010 to 2015 Toyota Prius aluminum skid plate installation. I'm going to let this video run in real time, that way you can get an idea of how long it might take you to do for yourself, so feel free to fast forward to the boring parts. Um, this particular Prius was the perfect candidate to use for this because of the things that were wrong with it. So this vehicle had hit a coyote on the highway and had caused quite a bit of front end damage and in that process had tweaked the subframe. So. Um, it's not uncommon to see tweaked subframes with the Priuses because they are bolted together, so there's a little bit of leeway either one way or another. But this one in particular did need to be brought back into square, which isn't difficult. All you need to do is loosen all eight bolts instead of just the four that go into the skid plate. Uh, this job also is perfect because I made a couple mistakes during the process, so it shows you things that you may run into. Um, it also had the skid plate that was there from the factory held on with uh, sheet metal screws that were screwed into the subframe. So. There's a few extra steps that are involved here, which took us a little bit longer than it typically would, but even then it was still under 15 minutes. So I always tell people plan to give yourself double the time that we do. Something along those lines, you know, 30 minutes or so, I think is pretty fair for removal and installation of this. So there's really only a few tools you're going to need for this job. One is going to be a 10 millimeter socket, another is going to be a panel removal tool or a flathead screwdriver, and the next thing is going to be a 17 millimeter socket. You're going to go ahead and start by taking out all of the 10 millimeter bolts. These are going to be randomly throughout the bottom of the skid plate. Um, this one, in addition to those, had the sheet metal screws as well, which typically you won't see, but can run into from time to time if the previous owner has screwed those in or if you've had it yourself. So here's where I made my first mistake. When this panel falls out, you can see up in the top left corner, a little plastic clip falls out of the bumper fascia itself. That clip is needed in order to secure the wheel well corner panels in at the end. So once you've got all of the 10 millimeter bolts, or in this case, all of the 10 millimeter bolts and all of the sheet metal screws removed, you can go ahead and grab your body panel removal tool and remove all of the plastic push pins from the bottom of the skid plate. So now that you've got the plastic skid plate removed, you can go ahead and toss it aside and you'll see a bar that runs front to back on the vehicle. This is held on by two 17 millimeter bolts. You're going to remove those bolts and then remove the bar from the vehicle. Typically this bar would support the plastic skid plate with a push pin directly in the center. This vehicle did not have that plastic push pin in there.
Next, you're gonna to wanna to grab a pair of channel locks or vice grips or a crescent wrench or even just a rubber mallet in order to bend the rear tab up about an inch. By bending it up an inch, it allows the skid plate to sit flush against the subframe and allows for more clearance beneath the vehicle. Next, you want to use that same 17 millimeter and remove the four bolts that would anchor the new skid plate into the vehicle. Uh, here is where my next mistake comes in. I removed the outside bolt instead of the inside bolt. The Gen 4s, you remove the outside bolt. Obviously, this being a Gen 3, you remove the inside bolt. Um, I catch this later on, obviously, but um, this slowed me down a little bit as well. Once you've got your bolts removed, you can go ahead and grab your skid plate and you'll want to hold it up to the bolts, make sure everything lines up. I like to start with the front bolts because of their length, it makes it a little bit easier to get started. Um, usually a couple turns, a few threads in is more than enough to get the first one in and then you can move on to the second front hole as well. So here's where I noticed I removed the wrong bolt. Um, obviously learn from my mistakes. Remove the inside bolts, not the outside bolts if you're working on a Gen 3. I decided it'd be easiest just to pull this off instead of trying to squeeze in there and get that bolt removed and swapped out. So it slowed me down a little bit, but not a whole lot. When I first held up the skid plate, I could tell that the bolt holes didn't perfectly line up, which meant that the frame was slightly out of square. I was initially going to reinstall all four bolts again that I'd already removed, but I decided against this since I was only going to be loosening the other four while also swapping out the ones that I had mistakenly taken out. One thing I like to do before loosening uh, the remaining four bolts is to get the holes that I can started and the skid plate up and then see how much it needs to move. There's enough clearance on each side of the skid plate to still access all four bolts on the outside as well. Um, so once you've got this up there, it kind of gives you a better idea of just how much it needs to move. And fortunately, even on this vehicle, with having had the front end impact, once the additional four bolts were loosened, everything would drop right back into square. One thing you want to make sure and do is get the fender well front quarter panels 
tucked snugly up underneath the skid plate. It actually pinches it between the subframe and the skid plate. I wasn't quite comfortable with how far out they were, so I wanted to loosen these front two bolts and tuck it farther in before tightening it down. If you neglect to do this, there is a possibility that the front quarter panel can catch wind and get ripped out entirely. So try and save yourself that headache and do this step. So here's where I noticed that the plastic clip was missing from the bumper fascia. I'd initially thought that it had possibly gotten lost in the front end impact, uh, but fortunately I later found it on the ground before putting everything back together. But either way, you're going to want to grab your four 10 millimeter bolts, at least for the skid plate, and secure the skid plate to the bumper fascia. Next you want to go ahead and secure the front fender well quarter panels to the plastic clips and the bumper fascia. Uh, these are going to be the same 10 millimeter screws that hold the skid plate to the bumper fascia as well. So here's where I noticed that plastic clip from the bumper fascia and go ahead and install the final 10 millimeter screw. So this was actually just supposed to be a final test fit before going into production, but with everything fitting so well, uh, we ended up going with this final design. Uh, one thing we didn't show here that we did after the fact is tightening the remaining four perimeter bolts, the 17 millimeters that secure the subframe. Uh, so you're going to want to go ahead and be sure to tighten those up as well. And here we have a couple photos of the before and after ground clearance. Obviously you can see that removing that plastic skid plate and replacing it with the metal one provides you with about an inch of additional ground clearance depending on where you measure from. Another thing that we're really proud of is our oil drain panel. This was highly requested from people and something that we initially steered away from because we didn't want to sacrifice structural rigidity. Fortunately we were able to figure out a way to have a skeleton backer that still maintained a large majority of the structural integrity while also allowing for this removable panel to simplify oil changes. Even without the removable panel, uh, removal of the skid plate takes about 60 seconds. Here we have a video of us doing it in about 30, but plan to give yourself about a minute to remove it. So. Removal is very, very simple, even if you don't have the oil panel, but uh, it obviously was something that was requested and something that we wanted to try and cater to if we were able to maintain that structural integrity. And that about wraps things up. I want to thank you all for your support. I look forward to working with you more in the future.